Hey guys, welcome back to the ranch. It's uh, June 17th and I'm going to do my weekly garden update. A lot to cover today. i uh, been busy at the ranch. Had a new baby cow delivered yesterday and I got two more pending so I'm trying to keep an eye on the cows and the garden and uh, the heat. So um, today is a beautiful day. This is one of the first mornings I've gotten up and uh, it's been pleasant outside. Nice small breeze not a not a gale force wind like we're used to having here and uh, not too hot yet however the forecast is terrible um, we are looking at no rain for the next 10 days again and we haven't had any rain I can't remember when it's been over a month I do believe and um, the garden is showing that and I'll uh, I'll uh, talk you through it as we as we go look so let's get started. Start here as we always do at this first grow box. And uh, you'll see it looks a little different. We've got sweet potatoes. And these things are thriving. I mean, these little slips they're called uh, I don't think any of them died and I planted them you know with a 90 plus degree day I've been keeping them watered but uh, they are they are very hardy plants it does appear this is the Beauregard variety I'm not sure what to expect um, but I've got 30 foot uh, grow box here with about I think it's about 40 plants maybe maybe 45 I don't know there's a lot of plants in there so uh, I will plan on healing up some adding some some dirt above the uh, you know kind of mounding these up a little bit uh, because they're not planted very deep in hindsight maybe I should have uh, used the broomstick method and planted them straight down into the grow box uh, instead I'll leave a link here to my uh, video where I planted these I, I did a uh, horizontal plant just a little trench and put the roots in horizontally may have been a mistake in a grow box I'm not sure but we will um, keep you posted and see how it goes banana peppers banana peppers banana peppers I have never had as many banana peppers in my life I've been eating these things non-stop pickling them cutting them up giving them away uh, I've been <laughs> I got a guy that cleans my pool I've been giving him probably two or three pounds a week when he comes by he's uh, overjoyed but um, what I've noticed with these banana peppers are uh, some of them are starting to turn you see there the little orange color um, there's two varieties here one of them's Lola banana peppers and one of them's just banana peppers and I don't know which is which but um, these on this end are a dark green or leaf they're starting to turn a little red as they get older and one thing I've noticed is it seems like the peppers are getting more tough if that's makes sense like they're not as I don't know like they're not as crisp and and uh, and tender as they were when they first when I first started picking them now they're getting it seems like they're a little more tough is that I don't I, that's the only way I can explain it so leave a comment below let me know if that's something that happens to older banana plant peppers uh, banana pepper plants if the fruit starts getting a little tougher or maybe it's the heat uh, either way I've got an abundance of banana peppers here next year I'm gonna scale those back so here we've got our bell peppers and some of these are supposed to be um, colored and I'm seeing here this one's this one's turning red so uh, a few varieties are uh, well this is one variety it's mixed color banana or bell peppers so it's only five or six plants here but they've been producing um, I mean pretty well I've got some pretty good size peppers off of them already and uh, I enjoy the, the bell peppers so I'm doing good there jalapenos this is the what's called the early jalapeno let me get 
back here and uh, I guess it's normal for these little these these this variety to put off little but uh, I'm sorry little jalapenos because that's about all we're getting that's kind of like the biggest we're getting right there here's a red one that doesn't make sense wonder why that one's red now there's some so they're uh, they're just kind of smaller than what I expected however they are hot they have pretty good flavor um, so jalapenos doing well here we are at the red snapper determinate tomatoes now I've been able to keep these things producing even with the 90 plus degree heat we've still got uh, flowers and we've got new uh, fruit up on top here these these red snappers are huge this is one of my um, record setters I've only got uh, one so far that's over a pound but it was right at a pound um, a red snapper tomato and man they're good they are really good so you know it looks like uh, I've had a little insect damage I did finally get rid of the uh, the caterpillars they're gone I've uh, safely eliminated them using Monterey um, organic pesticides the BT and the uh, spinosad so I think they're gone I haven't seen any more uh, caterpillar damage so happy about that and they're still producing so uh, they didn't get very tall I mean this is I don't know three feet uh, so I'm not sure if that's as tall as they're supposed to get. I don't know if the heat stunted them or whatnot, but uh, they're they're still producing up here on the top. So, and I've gotten lots and lots of tomatoes off of these things already. So, uh, pretty happy with the red snappers. Okay, now we're over to the indeterminate tomato plants. These are the mortgage lifters. And boy, they are good. They are producing, and they're they're good tomatoes. They're uh, very good taste. A lot of meat, uh, not too juicy. I mean, they're they're my favorite so far. And out of my three varieties, these are my favorites. Um, they are also still growing, still climbing the trellis, um, still producing fruit up at the top. They're not as tall as I would thought. They're uh, you know a little stunted, but four or five maybe six feet tall some of them and um, no real pest I've got rid of the caterpillars on these two and you know they look healthy overall they're not thriving anymore I mean I guess with the 90 plus degrees every single day I uh, should be thankful for what I got here and uh, we've got probably 40 or 50 pounds of tomatoes so I'm trying to figure out what to do with them. I'm giving them away, eating them every day. Probably gonna try to make some tomato sauce pretty soon. So, as you can see, pretty good, pretty good looking tomato crop here. Very happy. Now on the other side here, and <clears throat> mixed in with this one, we've also got some of these cherry tomatoes, same deal. They're still growing, still producing. Um, I've got probably five pounds of cherry tomatoes in there, uh, and I pick about a pound, uh, I'm sorry, probably about three pounds a day I'm picking off of this right now. I mean, there's, a, there's an abundance of cherry tomatoes here, and uh, these are the ones my wife likes a lot, so um, she's not able to eat them all. We're giving them away. And I guess I'm gonna have to figure out a recipe. I'm not sure if uh, you can leave a comment below. Can we can these or um, pre you know use them in uh, canning recipes? I mean, do it, do I have to like peel these things or can I use them whole? I'm not sure. I'm uh, not sure exactly what I can do as far as preserving these tomatoes. So that's the good news. The bad news is the heat is really taking a toll on my melons and cucumbers and stuff like that there's some more of those gorgeous mortgage lifter tomatoes look at those things right there mmm so good so 
as you can see down here at this end of the bed, the uh, cantaloupes just take a beating from the heat. They look horrible. I've sprayed them every week here, every seven days or five days, maybe it was, with this uh, mildew, um, preventative mildew spray. It's the organic stuff, and it uh, I don't know if it worked or not, but, I mean, they look horrible. They're still producing fruit. I mean, I've got cantaloupes coming up here, and uh, I've got six or seven, I guess, in the bed here. The watermelons, I lost one to splitting but I've got four, no, three watermelons left. These things are supposed to get 25 pounds. However, they're only, I don't know, maybe five pounds. And uh, it looks like, I don't know if they're getting close to right, but they haven't grown at all in about three weeks or so. Seems like they're stunted. And I, I think I read somewhere that this little tentacle right here is supposed to be an indication of ripeness. I can't tell that if this is dead that you can pick it and I don't know if that's true but they didn't get big enough I think I might have been uh, I might have been the problem when I my watering system uh, I didn't water them at at the right time and now they're stunted so um, we'll see I'm probably gonna pick one of these in a day or two and see how it turned out birdhouse gourds I mean they're they're just hanging there um, getting decimated by by the heat and maybe insects i don't know i've been spraying them i haven't sprayed these as much because i don't t care about them too much i'm just trying to get the gourds off of them and um, make birdhouses but um, i did see some insects on uh, on this cantaloupe plant this morning they were like little i don't know how to describe them they're flyers they they were long and, and they were very sneaky when you get close to them they would move around to the other side of the stem very quick and when you try to grab one they they jumped off they flew off so i had like three or four of them on here let's see if i can get a picture of them later and show you guys okay moving over to the pumpkins i have got four jack-o-lantern pumpkins here um I guess that's as big as they're getting. Three of them have turned completely orange and one down there is still green. I uh, did have some of those, um, I guess they're squash bugs or something. They were eggs, the uh, little egg sacs all over these leaves. And you can see something over here decimated these leaves overnight. I mean, it just started uh, tearing these things up. I don't know if that was a different insect or what, but uh, I've, uh, pulled off the, the egg sacs that I found and put them in compost pile, which is probably not good after I thought about it, but they're already in there. There's one of the green ones. So pumpkins, uh, I'll probably be pulling them out pretty soon. I don't think they're gonna last till Halloween, so maybe figure out some way to use those. Okay, butternut squash. This thing, this plant right here just completely died. Um, it's almost dead on the ground and uh, I've only got a handful of very small this is the biggest one we've got and there's another one about almost that size but the rest of them are tiny and uh, I think they're fully formed I don't know if I'm gonna get any more off of them I really love the taste I picked a small one and ate some of it and man I like the I like the taste of the flavor texture I like everything about this squash uh, but I wish I'd have got more so I don't know what I'll have to do to fix that. Okay, cucumbers. Boy, they look awful. The leaves, uh, same thing, powdery mildew. I sprayed them. I think it may be eliminated, but the leaves look horrible. But I'm still getting probably three, four pounds of cucumbers every single day. I mean, they are, they are very productive and... Um, got too many to don't know what to do with them all I mean look up here as you can see it's still producing massive amounts of cucumbers so I've got an overabundance even though the leaves look uh, pretty pitiful I'm still getting lots and lots of cucumbers so I've had plenty of cucumber salad cucumber and cherry tomato salad it's been a 
staple here for the past couple weeks. And there's a there's one that got too big right there, probably. Pick that off. There she is. All right, let's move over to the uh, blackberries. Got some very exciting updates on the blackberry patch. They're finally starting to produce, not berries, but canes. Um, I did a pruning video and uh, and I'll link it here, but I'll, I'll uh, show you what, what the results were of that. Um, I've still got a couple that are not growing that fast, but they're, they're putting off shoots from the root system. So I've got extra shoots, so hopefully that one will start growing. But all the rest of them are starting to put off these green, light green growth primary canes. And they're thriving. So this one is putting off some berries. Now here is the exciting part. Okay, on my pruning video, you'll see where I, I tipped this one right here. This thing got up to about four feet tall and I just tipped it and then a couple of days after that it started putting off these laterals so this is the primary main cane and then these weren't here these laterals were not here so once i tipped it i got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten laterals off of this primary cane so that's the goal here is to the to make these primary canes put off laterals this year and then next year all these laterals are going to have berries on them so very excited about that one that's one of them um, <clears throat> this one same thing this one same thing i mean one two three four five six seven eight nine ten lots of laterals can't even count all the laterals so very happy some of these are still small but they're growing i'm uh, i'm hitting them with 202020 liquid soluble fertilizer every week so once a week during this growing stage here to try to get all the canes to produce laterals and get up here to the top wire of the trellis that's my goal all right moving on to the uh, experimental garden here we are at the experimental garden if you haven't followed along this used to be a potato bed and um, I threw some extra seeds that I had on the sides of the potato bed and uh, so far I've harvested all the potatoes not a very good uh, yield of potatoes so learned my lesson there you really just can't grow potatoes in this in this uh, area of the country I don't think I, unless I, I don't know maybe containers or something but this one got uh, it was just not productive so um i'll figure out how to do it better next year but i have overrun the potato patch with watermelons this uh, whole entire middle section here is now watermelons and there's one cantaloupe vine in there and there's one of those gourds down there at the end so right now we've got i think three or four melons that i've seen i haven't seen any uh, cantaloupes yet and um We've got okra over here. This is a variety called red burgundy okra. Still got one of those pan squashes right here. It's growing, but not producing much fruit. And uh, up there we've got some eggplant and then we've got our sweet corn that I've just kind of given up on. It's not uh, producing really at all. It's just, uh, I just dumped out a, a bunch of old seed and yeah, it, the wind blew it over. I might get a corn or uh, an ear or two of corn. I don't know. We'll see. But this red burgundy okra is starting to produce pretty much every day. I'm getting uh, one or two, what are they called? I don't know, okras, one or two pods, whatever they're called. So I'm getting a handful a day. And uh, so here, let's look at the watermelon. I thought I saw one in here. Where is it? There it is, right there. So there's the one of the watermelons. I've got a couple about that size in here. And I do believe these are seedless. So in this 
bed I've got one seedless variety and one pollinator per variety that's I guess kind of the oblong ones so there's another one and then over there is the oblong that's the pollinator I do believe now here finally finally got a eggplant there's one fruit forming right there it's my first eggplant so pretty happy with that three little plants I might get one or two eggplants all right we'll move on to the goji berries all right here's the goji berry update I took the advice of Mike at Central Texas Homestead and uh, trimmed off the berries on those three there and also hit them with some fish emulsion and seaweed uh, fertilizer so hopefully they'll perk up a little bit I had some yellowing and dead leaves on one of those bigger ones um, these over here aren't really growing too much I'm just hoping they're putting out roots uh, I plan on sell, uh, transplanting these into the ground sometime this fall and uh, hopefully getting some goji berries for the next few years so there's the update on the goji berries over here we got our uh, strawberry tower still still doing okay I mean it's not producing any berries and um, staying green hopefully I can keep it alive this summer and uh, through the winter and then we'll have a good harvest of strawberries next spring all right all right guys this is the uh wrap up for my garden update for june 17th i uh just wanted to show you my backdrop here i am already feeding hay to my cows and uh, that is not normal i have i have never seen this much uh dry weather in the in the early part of the year we normally get 10 15 20 inches of rain in our springtime here and it just boosts the pastures and the pastures are able to uh, produce enough to keep the cows you know grazing up until August or so when it gets really hot and dry however I am already hot and dry and the pastures are crispy and the cows have to um, have to eat so I've already been uh, buying and feeding uh, round bells here in June I mean the first of June not normal um, so uh, pray for us pray for rain uh, hopefully we can uh, get through this summer without you know having to get rid of cows I've I've got too many cows here that I, I already knew that but um, I was planning on keeping them through the end of the year uh, but with this kind of uh, drought going on um, it's getting really expensive so um, I might have to cut my losses you know uh, if you know anybody in the cattle industry I'm sure you'll hear complaining that uh, prices at the uh, grocery store do not match prices at the uh, auction barn so there's a, uh, a missing link there and I don't um, use the auction barn because my cows are miniature Herefords and I don't take them to the auction house um, I have to sell them private treaty because the auction house is strictly weight uh, pricing and since they're minis they don't they don't uh, they don't produce enough weight to uh, be profitable at the auction house so I can get much more for them selling them to private individuals um, but when you go to the grocery store price of beef is outrageous and uh, the the uh, what I'm hearing is the price of beef at the cattle uh, auctions is not even near what it should be or what it could be so there's a middleman in there Packers uh, union. I don't know how it all works. I'm, I'm not a cattle industry expert I just have a few head here to get my ag exemption and fill our freezer and make some money on the side However, we're not making any money on the side with the with the cows right now. So anyway That's gonna do it for my garden update for June 17th Thanks for watching like subscribe all that leave some comments down below if you see anything I'm doing wrong or if you have any questions on how I'd got where I'm at so thank you very much